Hey guys, it's Extra Enforce One and One, and welcome to my brand new series about programming. This is Code School. This brand new series is um, my attempt at a show about programming. Um, just programming, really. That's about it. Pretty boring, really. Well, it's pretty boring if you're not into this kind of thing, but if you are, and you're a very tech-savvy person, you have a reasonable mind to create something on the computer, or the interwebs, or the local webs, or the 62.31.11.76, well then definitely have a look at this guide. Um, this is a series that I'll be running, I'm going to be doing it either weekly, monthly, yearly, or decadely, or centurily, or millenniumly. So this is going to teach you about the basics and maybe the advanced stuff of writing a program, say in Visual Basic, C Sharp, C Plus, Java, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, F, F Sharp. <sighs> About it, really. Well, that's probably because that's all my knowledge extends to, but I'm sure if there's more, I'm um, just email me and I will spend hours of my life learning them. That's what I did with these guys. So, in this first episode of um, Code School, we're going to be learning the basics of the webs and HTML. Now HTML is a um, hypertext markup language and um, that basically means you write a lot of stuff and it comes up all pretty and whatnot. I'll show you an example in a minute. So first of all we're just going to run you through how to make a simple thing in maybe Notepad if you've got Windows and you know get it if you have Linux and the other one if you have Mac. Um, yeah, how to get a professional development, a professional development environment, um, for example at Tana Studio. Um, to write code and stuff. And then I'm also going to teach you how to get a great web host um, to host all your stuff on. Or even if you're sad and like me, you can host it on a tiny little laptop that your brother decided to give up for Christmas and then kind of overload it with server requests. So anyway, let's just dive on the computer and we'll get going. Okay, so for the start of this tutorial, um, I'm going to introduce you to a few basic applications, um, maybe some even advanced ones for editing your hyper HTML code. So, um, for you just, if you're just starting out, um, just want to write a few little HTML snippets for maybe your first website, I um, just use your basic um, text editor. For Windows, that would be Notepad. Um, and for Mac, I think, I don't know what Mac's called, I think it's just called um, Get It as well, and Get It is also for Linux, which is the default text editor. I just launch that. So, to start off um, with HTML, uh, I'm going to show you the basic, the basics. So, I'm going to create a H1. Now, a H1 just means a big, like a like a 48 sort of pixel size. I think it's 48. I'm not sure. So H1, and then I'm going to put hello YouTube. Now, to end every piece of code so it doesn't run on, you just add um, the same tag but with a forward slash in front of it. That ends this segment of H1. Now, press enter. The one problem with HTML when you're typing stuff is that when you press enter and have a new line, for example, if I put here, a P, P is for paragraph. P means I'm creating a new paragraph. So if I type hello again, then I press enter and then I type hello for the third time, those would all be displayed on the same line. So it would go H1 at the top with hello YouTube, then underneath it it would say hello again, and right next to that it would say hello for the third time. There would be no space. To make a new space, you'll have to be adding a new paragraph line there. There's lots of other basics, um, there's lots of other um, methods to make this work, but I recommend just doing a new paragraph line because it keeps your code uncluttered and makes it a little easier for you. Okay, so let's just save that, for example, and you're going to make sure you save as in all files, and I'm just going to put it in put it in a documents folder so you don't lose it. I'm going to call it, oops. I'm going to call mine index.html, and you're just going to save it, and then you're going to open up your file manager, you can navigate to where you saved it, right click on it, and open with and just open with and then choose a web browser. I'm gonna use Firefox because I'm sure that's what most of you have. So here we go. Hello YouTube. Hello again. 
and hold for the third time. Alright? Make sense? Cool. So let me just explain to you what I was talking about earlier. So if you get rid of that bit, save, hit refresh on Firefox. There it is, it's on the same line. That's another deck, that's a wee deck side. But, anyway, take that up. P, save, refresh. Okay. Now that we've got a few simple basics, you can now write a lovely paragraph um, with loads of lovely information about your site. Um, yeah, on your web page. So, um, another basic element is images. Now, I want to put an image of a football on my website, for example. I hate football, but I'm going to put a picture of it on anyway. So, what you'll do is you're going to type IMG for image, then SRC, and SRC means source. Then you have to put equal sign, because whenever you're inputting data, you have to put the thing, then source. Then you're going to put two brackets, and you're going to put that. That's the end tag, obviously. So, this is where you put the link to your image. So, I'm going to go onto Google Images, and I'm going to search for a football. Now, if you're going to get if you're steal an image from someone else, um, make sure you get the full full size image link. Obviously, if you're not going to steal an image, um, if you're going to upload your own image, we'll get to that later or with FTP and whatnot. So, just copy this, link in your address bar, and then go back into your text editor and you want to put in here the link. So once you've done that, you're going to hit save. We're going to open up the document again in Firefox. There we go. A lovely football with a weird border on it. Now, this looks pretty messy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you the break tag. Now the break tag is a very, very useful piece of code. What it does, it just inserts like a space like this. So for the break tag, it's just BR. You can use it as a BR or a slash BR. It doesn't matter. Do the same thing. You can insert as many of them as you want. BR, BR, BR. <laughs> Save it. And open it again with Firefox. So there we go. That is two lines just here. Alright, so now we have a lovely image of football, but it's massive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it smaller. So in the image tag, just after the, the end bracket for where the image is stored, you're going to put a little thing just before that end tag and type height. The height equals, and then we have two brackets again. And then these two brackets, you're going to bracket, <laughs> speech marks, and you're going to type um, whatever you'd like it to be. This is in pixels, so I'm going to type 100 pixels. I'm going to save it. And once again, I'm going to open it in Firefox. There we go. That's it, 100 pixels tall. Now, if you want to also make it 100 pixels wide, you would then do width equals same syntax 100. Hang on, let's be cheeky, let's make it 7. So this is going to create a mongoed image of a football. Yep, there we go. There goes our flattened per football person over there. Okay, so that's basically the um, start of HTML, getting to know the basic tags. Um, that's, that's all the stuff that's built in. Now, if you're adding an extra browser, you're going to need someone with something like QuickTime. And um, if you want to add these extra effects in, something like QuickTime and Flash. They are the things that give you the embed tags. Now, embed is the nightmare of web developers, because if you add an embed tag, something and someone is on an operating system, haven't downloaded to Adobe Flash for whatever reason, it's not going to work and it's going to have a horrible error message and things like that. So that's why we move moving to things like HTML5 and HTML5 is the thing that unifies it. You no, no longer need um, Adobe Flash or QuickTime or anything to help your browser run like that. It just works. It's got HTML5, everything's encoded in MP4s and whatnot. The only problem with that is um, people who use Firefox are also going to be screwed because Firefox is, have no plans to support um, the new H.264 codec for um, the new videos. So anyway, beyond with that, I'm going to seal another video from a website. So let's just see. Um, let's go to videojs.com because I'm sure they had a lovely picture of something. There we go. 
So if you want to find images that people have put in, then you're gonna want, then you're gonna go and steal their stuff. So here we go. Source SRC. That's just for HTML5. So I'm just gonna steal this link from image from Video GS. I'm sorry, guys. And you're gonna paste it in, right? And then just leave it as it is. Hit save. I'm not sure this will work for me because it shouldn't work for me because I don't think I have Flash installed or Flash or QuickTime or any of the above. Oh wait, no, uh, no, it's working. Is it? No, come on, come on, come on. Yes, sort of. If you get what I mean, it's um, a bit mongoed for people who don't have the right browser. So let's see if I open that in Chromium. Chromium's just, you know, the open source version of Chrome. Here we go. No, exactly the same problem. It depends, you have to do a bit of tinkering to see what's going to work with your website. I'm not sure if it's just video GS's um, little. Um, maybe they've encoded it for HTML5 completely and I've been left out the loop. Anyway, so that's basically it. You can embed stuff like um, music. I'm sure I have something on my Dragon Dev server about this. No, if I remember correctly, that should be. Come on. Anything? No. Oh, well, that is Firefox's fault. Now, if you're using Linux, obviously you're gonna know this problem. You know, with um, Flash plugins and so on and so forth. So, for this example, I'm actually gonna have to get this installed. Bear with me. Hmm. Oh well. It seems that I already have it, but it is not working. Oh well. Right, so. That's basically that. You can embed games with this as well. This is in case you're creating some sort of what games website or whatnot. You can embed games. So that comes in the form of SWF files, for example. I don't actually have this stored. Game.swf. Now, if you have a SWF file um, of a game that you've made, then yeah, this is definitely the way to go. Um, just yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, if you want to do stuff like links, so if you want to have a link to say this is my awesome web page, then have a link to yeah, this is my awesome awesome web page number two. What you do is gonna do a href equals. Then you're gonna put the link. So. If you put links to something on your own website, you don't have to put HTTP in their website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type ahref um, images images no sorry that's completely wrong, I'm not trying to embed an image um, index2.html for example, I'm going to save that, I'm going to create a new empty document over here, um, index2.html. So that's when I have two empty files. Now this one I'm also going to open and I'm going to add a nice little bit of text saying hello to... So everyone remember the h one tab? Hello YouTube 2. And then you're going to close the h one tag. Hit save and let's see how this goes. I haven't tried it like this before, so we'll have to see how it runs. So let's see. It's going to go really slow. Because I think I might need to... Yeah, there we go. Right, so there's no link. See, what went wrong? We've already got the link there. Ahref, what's wrong, huh? What we've done wrong is we haven't added any text. So what we need to do is we need to take here, after this bracket, we're going to type link. And then you're going to stop it with this, and you're going to put a forward slash a. You don't do forward slash a href, just a forward slash a. You're going to hit save, and then you're going to open it again. Sorry about this. This is going to take a while. So after you've done that, that should pop up. Loading ever so slowly. I shouldn't have put that in. There we go. Link. going to hit link. Hello YouTube number two, Come back, link, hello YouTube number two, woo! Now you can do as many links as you want, you know, it's just, um, links are a bit of linking between web pages, quite obviously, hence the name, link. 
So yeah, I'm going to put a link here to index3.html just because I'm obsessed with that. So a href equals, and have that, and then of course index3.html link three. End it with the forward slash a. Save. So now when we open up index.html, it will take its time as usual. Here we go. Chromium fast as usual. Here we go. So link. Link three. Oops. It's gone. Oh, it's not even there yet. Create a document and then I'm gonna put yeah. Index three dot HTML. Make sure everything's there before you start creating stuff. Alright, make sure everything's already made because it's gonna give you errors like that. I'm not even gonna bother with tags this time, just gonna put hi. So, finally, so this is your basics have been mastered. What you want now? Oh dear, that's not good. So, hello YouTube, hello again, hello YouTube too. Hi. Now, that's it really. That's all the basics. Um, don't put flash on your website, please. Don't it makes it look really bad. Um, another thing that I'm going to warn you not to put on your website is things called iframe. Now you may have a sudden urge to put an iframe on your website. Don't, don't, just please don't. Iframes are like embedding a web page inside your website. They are horrible. They look ugly. So, um, let me show you for example. So I'm going to do an iframe src with index2.html. So what that's going to do is index.html. It's going to embed that web page. It's going to embed this web page inside this web page in a little box. Now let's see how this turns out. So I'm going to make it height equals 400. 400. Width equals 400 as well. And then I'm going to close it. Save. And then I'm going to open index.html. Let's see how this goes. So there we go. Hello, YouTube 2, link 3, inside there. Hi. Link. Link three messed up. See, I don't, I don't like that sort of syntax because everything's in the wrong place. If you know what I mean. Because there we go. Hello YouTube two. Link link three. So I hit this link, then it goes to link three, then I hit this link, it goes to here, and it goes to here, and it's like a matrix. Now you're back where you started. So you see why you don't like iframes, and they also lower your Google page rating, so it means you're less popular on the web. You put iframes on. So basically, yep, that's it for the first episode of Code School. You now know how to write. First, sorry, the first part of the first episode of Code School. You know how to write some tags, put some lines in, know how to put some images in, how to embed some swift, 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 whatever you call them. And yeah, and how to put some links in, which is awesome. Don't put iframes in, we've been over this. And now, um, enjoy the break. There's going to be a break, there's just going to be a blank screen, and then I'm going to come back on after a long wait. Alright, so, next up, we're in. We're learning CSS. Okay, so for this um, second part of the Code School lesson, we're going to be looking at CSS. Now, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and it can come in the form of a style tag, which is like a angle bracket, angle bracket, and a style in the middle. Then you write your CSS code, or it can come as its completely own CSS page. Now. If I remember correctly, I think I'm going to go and grab Google's font. Now, just for example of CSS, I'm going to use a font, yeah, so a font. That's just all I'm going to cover in one lesson, because I don't have much time. So, I'm going to search for Ubuntu Google Web Font. So if you want any font, and then you type Google Web Font, then it will come up here. So I spelled Ubuntu wrong, sorry, canonical. It's just with my internet connection and then open in Google Web Fonts. Lovely. Alright, so I'm just going to go for the normal 400 pixels. 400 pixels? I don't know what that means. I think it's 400 pixels. No, that'll impact my page load time by 28 milliseconds. Oh dear. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this code that comes up down here. This is in code 3. It says link href, HTTP, Google APIs, CSS, and a family, then your font, re relative style sheet, type text, or CSS. 
I'm just going to copy that, and you're going to open up our well-known friend. Our well-known friend. Ubuntu, you're pissing me off. Get it. Here we go. <laughs> Our computer's going unbelievably slow today. I can't believe it. Four gigabytes of RAM, and it's going like this. I find that depressing. Right. Okay, now this is beginning to get on my nerves. This computer sucks. Four gigabytes of bloody RAM. Whoa. It's not meant to do that. Let's try this again, shall we? Get it. That's nice. Lovely. Okay, sorry about that. So, once again, link href. Link href just basically means it's a link and it's got a hreferral. Like a A. There we go. You add that to the top of your sheet. Then I'm going to do h1 Ubuntu web font. Then close that. Just for an example, of course. I'm going to kind of put that back in documents. I'm going to call it. I'm now going to call it Ubuntu HTML. Lovely. So now that I've done that, it's gonna work, right, isn't it? And just open up my folder and we can go and shoot this open in Firefox. <whistles> Documents and then Ubuntu.html. Open with Firefox. There you go, Ubuntu. I thought, wait, that doesn't look like a cool, nice Ubuntu web font, does it? That's because we haven't put in any CSS. So, we're going to go back over to the Google web fonts page. Wait a second. Ubuntu Google web font. And then, once again, we're going to go and click on that link. And this is for every single font, not just do the Ubuntu font. Now it has something round the right hand side here that'll look completely alien to you. There we go. Example H1 font family metrophobic wireless. Font family Ubuntu sans serif. Now that doesn't mean anything to me or to you right now. Wait, no, it does. That's completely what I'm looking for. Sorry, I'm not on track here. So, what you want to do is you want to copy and paste this bit font family Ubuntu. Probably better to start remembering it for later, but you know, it's nice to have it there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do this one of two ways. Now, raise your hands if you like to do it the really simple, easy way by just typing in style. Now, nope, nobody who wants to learn the full funnel on way of doing this Ubuntu HTML, what's its name? Yeah, me too. So, what I'm going to do is in this folder, I'm going to type create new folder and I'm going to put in CSS. So, in the CSS folder, I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to call it style. Cascading style sheet. This CSS document, I'm going to open it in the text editor as well. <coughs> A lot of text editors. And I'm going to type, I'm just going to paste the font family sans serif in. Now, this ain't going to do much for us. It doesn't, it's not going to do anything, it's just going to sit there. So, once you've saved that, you're going to go over here and you're going to do link. Oops, sorry, sorry. Link href equals style. Sorry, nope. CSS style.css. So that's that folder. And then you're going to put rel for relative style sheet just as above. Type equals text slash CSS. Get end of it. So what that's going to do is that's going to call on this to do stuff, I think. So we're now going to open up Ubuntu.html in Firefox. So Ubuntu will whoa, it's still the same. What have we not done? Okay, so for this to work, you're also going to have to um, tell the CSS what. Um, oh, where's it gone? For God's sake. 
See, I don't get why my computer is so slow because this is a really fast computer. It should be running really fast. I'm kind of disappointed with you, Dell. So, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to type in here, page one. That thing. And then put that thing. I don't know what those things are called, so I'm just going to call them that thing. You're then going to hit save. See? Go away. And then, once upon a time, there was an Ubuntu web font. Guys, give me a round of applause. Okay, that is how you can import different fonts using CSS. And that took an alarmingly long amount of time. I didn't expect it to do that. So, um, yeah. Then we're going to leave the CSS section at that today. Um, so yeah, guys, that's um, that is basically the tutorials, the Daily Code School tutorial for this week. Um, yeah, make sure um, you check um, all the videos out at youtubecom slash xdragonforce 101 Link on the screen. And um, if you want to go and check out any, in fact, no, you can cut the bit when I said cut the bit everything before that. I'm um, just stop after I said. So that's the oh, so that's all the tutorials for this week. All right, just cut it out there. All right. Cool, thank you. I'll do a filming bit. Alright guys, so that's it for this week. Uh, next week we're going to be learning all about Visual Basic. Um, that's Microsoft's programming language. Um, yeah, Visual Basic, not for the Linux, not for the Mac users, just for people who want to develop for Windows, basic application, progress bars and whatnot. Um, the video might be a little bit late because I'm going to have to set up a dual boot on my laptop with Windows. <laughs> and I hate Windows, so we're going to have to see how this ends up. So yeah, um, remember to like, like, favourite, comment, and I'm not sure where it is, but subscribe. Subscribe to me anyway. If it's there or there, I don't really care. Just subscribe to me. Love you.